it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, we're gonna learn how to knit a cow for the absolute beginner. This is a seriously easy project if you're just starting out knitting or if you've never knit before. We're going to be using one stitch, the knit stitch. We're going to be knitting this flat and seaming it at the end. So you don't need to know how to work in the round or anything fancy. We're just going to be using the knit stitch. And I've used a uh, popular line of the yarn cakes. So this is a self-striping yarn and we don't even have to switch colors. So this is a wonderful, wonderful first project for you if you're learning how to knit. Now for seasoned knitters, this is also a really nice project to take with you on the go. It doesn't have any uh, fussy stitches or any counting or anything like that. So this is also one of those really wonderfully relaxing projects as well if you have a little bit of knitting experience under your belt as well. So let's get started. The finished cow has a 36 inch circumference and is about 10 inches wide. So this makes it have a wonderful drape and it's generous without being overly bulky. It has a really nice uh, drape to the fabric and it just hits the right spot for a cow, I think. However, as we work along, I'm gonna show you how to increase or decrease the width of your cow and also increase or decrease the circumference of your cow, both of which are super easy. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a ruler or tape measure, a tapestry needle, a pair of straight knitting needles. These are US 10 and a half. They're 6.5 millimeter straight knitting needles. And your yarn. I'm gonna be using a yarn called Sweet Roll by Premier. This color in particular is called Punch Pop. It's shades of teal and aqua and lavender. And each one of these cakes, this is one of those popular cake uh, type yarns that are out right now. Each one of these cakes is about 245 yards. So if you're looking to substitute yarn, just look for something of a similar yardage and a similar weight. And this happens to be a medium or four on the yarn weight scale. To begin, we're going to cast on our stitches. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is a project for a absolute beginner knitter. We're just basically gonna make a long rectangle and then seam it together. Super easy, perfect first project for a knitter. So I like to use the long tail cast on. This is a great beginner cast on. If you are a more seasoned knitter and you'd like a different cast on, please feel free to do that instead. So what we're gonna do is for the long tail cast on, you need to measure a long tail, hence the name. So just do, um, I'm gonna do about 24 inches or so of a tail, and that should give us more than enough yarn to get started. And I have a little tangle there. There we go, okay? So what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our needle to begin. Now notice I only have one needle to cast on. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your needle, and bring up that loop. This will count as our first stitch. We're going to cast on 35 stitches to make our cow. So what we want to do for the long tail cast on is, I'm going to just get a little bit more yarn. This is called our working yarn. This is attached to the yarn cake over here. And then we have this tail. We're going to kind of keep the tail towards us and out of the way. So what you want to do is hold the needle in your right hand Take your left hand and your thumb and index finger and come in from the bottom so that it makes sort of like a upside down a V. Put your fingers in between. Now grab the bottom with your pinky and open that, grab the bottom and, and open it up. And then you'll get kind of like a diamond shape. So you have a diamond shape now. Let's try that one more time. Come in underneath the V with your thumb and index finger. Grab the bottom with your pinky. Open that up and then you have your diamond shape. Now what you're gonna do is take your needle and come up under your thumb, come up under your finger, and then bring it through that loop on your thumb, and then kind of tighten everything up. So now you have two stitches, okay? We just cast on our first stitch. Again, we're gonna do 35 stitches to begin. Okay, so what we wanna do is let the yarn hang down, working yarn is over this way, tail is towards you more, index finger and thumb come in from underneath, grab the bottom, open it up. Now you have that diamond shape. Come up under the thumb, up under the index finger, and through the thumb loop, okay? I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit. If you still wanna see it really slow, you can change the speed of the video to kinda of slow it down, or you can just back the video up a little bit if you need to see it a few more times. 
Okay, so let's cast on a few more. That's three so far, up under, around, and through. That's four stitches. Under, around the index finger, and through the thumb loop. Under the thumb loop, around the index finger, through the thumb loop again. Okay, so we have two, four, six stitches now, and we need 35. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more speed and we're gonna add the rest of our stitches. So that was six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We need to push it back, that's okay. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Push it back if you need to. 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35, okay? So here are our stitches, and that is gonna get us going. And what we're gonna do next is start knitting, okay? As a side note, if you want your cowl to be a little bit wider and more drapey, you can do more than 35 stitches. If you want your cowl to be narrower, if you want something long and skinny, or if you're making this for uh, a child, you can make it narrower by simply casting on less stitches. There's no special stitch count for this project, okay? So we're gonna grab our other needle, and notice I'm gonna pass the needle that we just cast on to my left hand. Now we're gonna get this tail out of the way. Now save this tail, because if your tail happens to be long enough, you can use it to seam your cowl later. So we're just gonna kinda of put that out of the way. And what's really nice about these yarn cakes is they kinda of just stay put on the table here. Okay, so let's knit. We're gonna be knitting all of our stitches. So if you wanna practice the knit stitch or you simply just want a super easy, quick knitting project, this is a great project for that. So again, grab your working yarn, get the tail out of the way, and then we're gonna work our first stitch, okay? So take the needle in your right hand, come up under that first stitch, on, under the needle, see how my needles are now crisscrossed? And then we're going to take the working yarn and go around the bottom needle, slide the needle from the back, catching that little loop there, so I just caught that, to the front and push it off, okay? Let's do that one more time. Bring the needle up under the next stitch, wrap the yarn around the bottom needle, slide the needle from the back to the front and making sure you're catching that little loop, that's your stitch, and then push it off, okay? If you need to take that tail and sort of tighten the bottom up here, that's okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is knit the next stitch. We're knitting all the stitches. So bring the needle up under that next stitch, wrap the yarn around that bottom needle, slide the needle from back to front, catching that little loop there, and push. Okay, we're just gonna keep doing this all the way across. Now you wanna make sure things are fairly loose and then you're not really making things too tight. As brand new knitters, we often have the tendency to make things really, really tight, and then it's hard to work those first couple of rows. It makes it harder on yourself. So when you cast on, if you're having trouble with tightness, you could even go up a needle size for casting on if you like, and then switch back to the other needle to knit. Okay, again, I'm just knitting all these stitches. Easiest project ever. Just knit the next one, knit the next one, and if you want to see this slower, like I did at the beginning, just kind of back the video up a little bit and you can see me do it really slowly. So we're just a little more than halfway through and we're just going to keep knitting. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is this particular yarn cake is self-striping. So as we work more and more rows, we're going to get some automatic stripes without even having to change the yarn. Now some people mention they really love how the colors change all of a sudden and some people like when the colors change more gradually. So these yarn cakes, the colors usually change um, all of a sudden as if you were joining a new ball of yarn. But this is a, a similar cool color family so it could be a little 
less dramatic than some of the bolder shades that are out there. So, you know, just to keep that in mind as you work. Okay, I'm knitting these last couple of stitches. Just like that. And then we're gonna set our needle down, flip our work into the other hand. So it's now in our left hand. And then we're gonna grab our right needle and do the same thing. So the row we just did, row one, you'll repeat for the rest of the project. Let's knit the next row together. Just so you can see, we're starting it the same exact way and we're just going to knit all those stitches. Now for beginner knitters, try to keep your hands nice and relaxed and loose. It's just one nice fluid motion that you're doing as you knit, okay? So you're just gonna keep repeating row one over and over just like I'm doing here until your cowl is as long as you'd like it to be. You might wanna stop and kind of try it on as you work. Just kind of wrap it around your neck and see if it's draping and kind of hanging the way you'd like it to hang, um, or until you run out of yarn, whatever comes first. So if you're doing one of these yarn cakes like I am, you know, you can just keep going until the yarn cake disappears. So just keep repeating row one, and then we are going to rejoin in just a moment, and I'm gonna show you how to uh, bind off your stitches, how to get this off of the needle, and then we're going to seam our project. So uh, stay tuned and we're gonna be moving on to the next part of our project next. So just keep knitting all the stitches to practice your knit stitches. This is an excellent project. And we will rejoin in just a moment. As you can see, our yarn cake gave us some really nice color transitions, some really nice blocks of color. So what we need to do next is I still have all my needles, uh, stitches on my needle. So we're gonna bind off all stitches. We're gonna use just a basic bind off. Now once again, similar to the cast on that we did at the beginning of the project, if you have a preferred way of binding off, definitely feel free to do that as well. We're just gonna do a basic bind off. Now I reserved a little bit of yarn. You'll need just a tiny amount of yarn to bind off your stitches, okay? So I reserved just a little bit of the aqua. So binding off is very easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna simply knit two stitches to start. So knit one stitch, knit the next stitch, and then we're going to take our needle in our left hand and come up under that first stitch you knitted, the one closest to you on the needle. We're gonna come in with our needle just like this, and we're gonna lift it up over that other stitch and off the needle, but we're gonna leave that other stitch on there, okay? And then we're just going to repeat the process. Knit the next stitch, take your left needle, lift up, over, and off that stitch, and off the needle. Knit the next stitch, repeat the same process. Lift up, over, and off, knit the next stitch, lift up, over, and off, just doing this all the way across to bind off our stitches. Now you'll notice when I knit a stitch, right before I go to, with my left needle to lift it up, I give it a little tug, and that helps kind of straighten those stitches out, and it gives me a little space so I can uh, put that needle in there, okay? So just keep working across, binding off all the stitches on your row. Now if you change the width of yours, like if you wanted it to be more narrow or more wide, you may have more or less stitches to bind off than I did, but you're still gonna do the same exact thing. Just bind off those stitches and always lifting that stitch closest to you. So I'm always doing the one closest to me. Lift it up, over, and off. Lift it up, over, and off. Up, over, and off. up, over, and off. So once again, this is the basic bind off. This is a really easy, quick way to bind off your stitches. Now you may have other scenarios in other projects as you continue on with your knitting journey that may warrant uh, a different type of bind off. So if you'd like to see some other bind offs in a video, please let me know and we'll do some more of those tutorials as well. So I am a little more than halfway across 
and you can see how quickly this works. And we're still doing knit stitches, so this bind off is going to blend in very nicely. And we also have plenty of yarn. I reserved just a few yards of that yarn. Lift it up, over, and off. We're in the home stretch. We only have a few more things to do before our project will be ready to wear. Just binding off this last couple of stitches. Just three more left. Up, over, and off. Up, over, and off. And that last stitch, same exact thing. Up, over, and off. Now you'll have one stitch left on your needle. So now we're ready to complete the knitted part of our project. So all you'll want to do is grab some scissors and before you cut, make sure that you can either use this tail at the other end or this one. Now this one is significantly longer, so I'm going to use this tail. So just give yourself, I did about 24 inches, and cut that yarn. Now open up that loop that's left on your needle uh, just a little bit, not too much, and send that tail through, and that will give you a nice knot to finish your project. You don't want any active stitches or loops sitting around, okay? So I just put a nice little knot on the end. You can kind of straighten things out a little bit once you've uh, done your bind off, okay? So at this point, if you made your rectangular strip very, very long, you could even wear this as a scarf. So this can actually also be a scarf tutorial as well. So what we want to do, we only need one tail in order to uh, seam this together. So let's get our other tail here, and I'm just going to trim it a little bit to make this more manageable. But what you'll want to do is grab your tapestry needle. Some people call this a yarn needle. It's just a, a very large needle with a larger eye. And if you're using really chunky yarn, you can use one that's even bigger. And for finer yarn, you can use a smaller one. But they're all much larger, all three of these, than a sewing needle, okay? So when you're weaving in ends, I have a blue tail here that I'm going to be weaving in. We don't want to go up into this lavender area. We want to stay in the blue area because it'll kind of disappear a little bit better. So what you're going to do is just go kind of over and under, over and under through some stitches and go in a ways. You don't have to go too far. Uh, it doesn't have to be overkill, but you can go in a couple inches or so bring the tail through, and then what I like to do is come back through the other direction. And I find that for the most part, I mean, it's not foolproof, but it'll keep those ends from popping out later, okay? So once you've done that in both directions, you can go ahead and trim the yarn and then remove your needle, okay? So this end is woven in. We don't have any more ends on that side. So what we want to do next is seam our cap, okay? So what you'll want to do is take your edges and you'll want to line them up. So get them nice and lined up. Now, because we cast on one way and bind off a different way, your edges might be a little bit, usually my cast on edges are a little bit more stretchier than my bind off edges, but it's, it's totally fine as long as you keep everything lined up as you seam, you should be fine, okay? So start by lining up your corners, just like that. And what we're gonna do is hold it together like a sandwich, the layers, and then come in with your tapestry needle, making sure to go through both loops of both layers. And that way we can use our tail of our project. See, I'm going in, there's two loops here, two loops there, both layers of our sandwich and we're going to just do this all the way across. For those of you who are crocheters or, or like to sew, uh, this process will seem pretty similar. This is a whip stitch. 
Basically a whip stitch is a pretty invisible way to join two pieces and what it creates is sort of a spiral through the work. So it does have some elasticity. It's very, very easy to learn. We're just doing this all the way across. Now I do realize my tail is aqua and I am going through a blue piece, but for the most part it's pretty nice and neat looking. There's not anything major that's showing and as you're working you'll want to you know, give it a little stretch, okay? So I'm gonna continue seaming across and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'll show you how to totally finish off the project. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end and I'm just gonna kinda put one over here for good measure just to take care of that corner. Now, on your very last stitch, don't pull it all the way through, leave a little loop there and then send the needle through that loop and you'll have yourself a nice little knot. And what I like to do is before you officially knot it off and cut everything, just give it a nice tug to straighten out all those seam stitches. And then what you can do, if you like, which I like to make sure things are really nice and secure, especially things that you wear that are gonna take a lot of movement and tugging and things like that. So then you can just uh, put one more knot there and then we're gonna bring our needle, because our tail is aqua, we need to weave this tail in. So I just kind of brought the, the yarn back over to this aqua side just to get it where we need it to go. And then what we're gonna do is just weave in our end, the same way we did before, but I'm just staying in that aqua area. We'll go in one direction with that and then come back in the other direction to sort of lock that in. Okay, and then we can remove our needle, grab our scissors, give it a nice tug, trim, and you can kind of pull on it a little bit to straighten it out. So let's turn it, so our, our seam, if you want it to show on the interior part of your cow, you can turn it back out. And you can see it blends in nicely with the blue. It just kind of repeats around so that is our absolute beginner knitted cow. It makes a wonderfully draped cow for the neck. It's cozy, beautiful colors, and it was very easy to do. I'd love to hear about your knitting experiences, if this is gonna be your first project and you're just starting out, or if you've been knitting for a while. Please share with us who taught you how to knit, how long you've been knitting, and what you're working on. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.